Hey, NorCal Carters, Jason is here, and I'm back with another basic carding video. And lately, I've been seeing on the forums gas tanks. And the number one question I get when someone is asking about a gas tank is, will it fit my cart? And the honest answer is, I don't know. Uh, you didn't buy the cart from me? I don't know. And sometimes I don't even know what gas tank I have in stock. And this is going to be the same with cart shops. So right here I have three examples of gas tanks. And I'll try to cover the basics for you. So when you're calling the local cart shop, you can give them more information so you can replace your gas tank. Because it's very common on a used go-kart that's had gas in the tank and a sit for a while, the plastic becomes brittle and you go to clean it or you go to take the gas tank out and you crack it or put your hand through it. We've all done it if we've been in the sport long enough. So it just, it's one of those things that happens. But, carding, there's nothing that is the same or basic. It's like having a gas tank for a BMW and calling a Volkswagen dealer. No, that's probably a bad analogy. Let's say a BMW and a Ford dealer and saying, I got a BMW. And I need a gas tank. And the Ford guy is going to go, okay, what kind of Ford do you have? And then you're going to say, no, I said a BMW. And the guy is going to go, yeah, but you called a Ford place. So, carding is very similar. Some of the parts interchange. A lot of it doesn't. And that's what this video is for, to help explain things for you. So in front of you, directly in front of you, this is the gas tank out of my personal cart. And I have a TB cart. TB. See? TB cart. Now, this is a very common style gas tank. In fact, the CRG gas tank is interchangeable, if not identical, um, except for the brand new CRG gas tank that is uh, a darker gray color. But none of that really matters. This gas tank is interchangeable with many brands. Very common gas tank. The next gas tank, this is a generic brand gas tank. And a lot of the chassis manufacturers use companies like Rigetti, Rodolfi, or KG, and there's a couple of others floating around there. And they just use a gas tank from one of those companies. And you may have this style gas tank. And the third one we have for an example today is a Freeline gas tank. And why did I grab this one? I grabbed the Freeline gas tank for one reason, because it looks so much different than all the others. And this is specifically a Freeline. And honestly, I don't even know if this is interchangeable with any other chassis out there. But uh, so Freeline is a subsidiary of Burrell. So Burrell, B-I-R-E-L, Burrell. So, let's start with the mounting. You can see on the Freeline tank, notice my handy dandy pointer. It uses a screw that secures the tank to the frame. And what you'll notice, we don't have it here because this doesn't have it, but there's going to be a crossbar on the actual frame that this screw goes through. So that must line up. And that keeps everything in, in order, is this screw. And it just unscrews. Now, little tip, if you have to replace this screw, what happens, you want to make sure you don't get a bolt that is too long. Because you will put a hole right through the tank. Or you could also pull this set nut out. So if you're missing the screw, what you'll want to do is properly measure or take a couple samples that you might have. And you want to make sure the bottom of the screw does not bottom out on the tank itself. So this is the securing screw. It has a nice plastic knob on it. And again, the frame will have a metal plate welded to the uprights and is going to align everything. So that's your free line sample. Now, the TB slash CRG is very similar. In fact, it's the same thread. See? Boom. But this one is at an angle. And what you'll also have on some of these chassis, instead of a plate, 
that's welded across. These are the steering upright grooves right here, steering uprights. You have a plate welded across. Well, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just have an aluminum bar that's been machined that acts as that welded in piece. And if you're missing that, you'll need to get one of those as well. And usually those aluminum fuel pump supports, they have radiuses cut out of them. So it cradles the bar on both sides to keep the tank firm in place. Because remember, when these are filled up, this is a nine liter gas tank. When those are filled up, they're quite heavy. And you want to have a good, strong mounting hardware so the tank doesn't get loose or sit there and go like this or rattle around. So again, your chassis may or may not have a bar that's welded in right where the tank goes and the screw goes. It may or may not. If it does not have a welded in piece, you'll need to acquire the plate that goes over that. The other thing you will notice, um, actually rewind. This tank, this actually has no securing hardware, but these go through, imagine if you will, that's the frame steering uprights. So this style gas tank actually goes through the steering uprights to secure it in place. And I'm personally not a big fan of this exact application because with the faster carts, 125 shifter carts, etc., again, these are heavy and things start getting a little loose or worn out. I have seen these pop out. So I am actually a fan more of this style where it screws. Okay, I got a little sidetracked. So again, this is the style that actually squeezes through the steering frame uprights. Now, side by side, Burrell Freeline. Here, TB cart. And that act, this might actually be a KG brand tank. But I hope the video shows it. You'll notice on the free line, the steering support uprights are straight up and down and parallel. You'll notice on the TB cart tank, they are angled both forward, so there's a one angle going forward, and they're angled towards each other. So again, free line, straight up and down, parallel. TB cart, CRG, angled forward and angled where it's narrower at the top than the bottom. Why am I explaining all this? Because again, this gas tank will not fit into this go-kart. This gas tank might fit into this go-kart because the angles are very similar. But this gas tank will not fit into the Burrell cart. So, again, I'm, I'm giving you too much info, but I want it to be easy. These are basic videos, and I want you to be able to purchase a gas tank and make it easy. So the next step, you're going to call your local cart shop and say, I need a replacement gas tank. They're going to say, what do you have? And you're going to say, I don't know. I'm new. I bought off Craigslist. Okay. So before you call that Craig, uh, not the Craigslist, you already called that guy. Before you called the card shop, grab a tape measure. Take some basic measurements. First, if you have a securing bolt position in the gas tank, start with a measurement from the table or the floor to the center of that bolt. So in this example, we're going to call it seven and one eighth inches. So seven and one eighth inches, or you can do it in metric and say 18 millimeter. You're going to write that number down. Then do a cross section from frame rail to frame rail across that bolt and try to do center center of the rail or you can do from inside to inside of the rail. But whatever you do, make sure you write down what you, uh, how you measured it so when you call the shop, excuse my um, shakiness. I'm all sugared up, I had a package of lifesavers. So, right here we have 40 millimeters to the center 
from the inside frame rail and at that spot it is 80 millimeters wide. So that gives you a reference. How tall the mounting position is from a, a flat surface and the width at that surface. And then take it one step further. Go maybe two inches down, take that measurement, tell the cart shop, two inches down, we're at 85 millimeter from the inside to the inside of the frame upright. So that information will be helpful. You will also need to explain to them how many pickups you have. This is your fill cap over here. Fill cap. All gas tanks will have it. But you have gas tanks. This is the vent. This is my supply. This is my return, which I'm not showing right now because that's still in the go-kart. But you will notice on the supply, I should have had this ready. There's a pickup tube. So the pickup tube has a brass fitting at the bottom and a piece of fuel line, non-hardening fuel line, that goes inside the tank. That is your supply line. This is my return line. This is my vent line. So very similar on this tank. This is my pickup. This is my vent. There is no return line. So if you're running an application such as a shifter cart that needs a return back to the tank, if you only have two ports, you will need to add a third nipple in order to have a return line. Now the free line. You'll notice on this one, you have the pickup, a vent, and a vent, or one return, one return. Now, if you're building a Freeline cart, and I'm not picking on Freeline, this is the, just this is the only chassis I've really seen the problem. Always, 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 always ream these fittings out. Because a lot of times there's a little bit of plastic in the bottom, and it plugs it. And if it plugs either your vent or your return, you will have an issue. So hold on, I have some guests that are joining me in the video that I'm trying to shoo off. And I'm not gonna record this video yet. So again, ream these out, make sure they're not blocked. Uh, and in fact, this one here is blocked a little bit. Um, so this came off of a used cart and that one happens to be blocked. So that's something you can keep an eye on. So that's something you, you can keep an eye on there. And again, these are just very basic videos. If you find this video helpful, maybe consider a donation to NorCalCarters.com. You can do so through PayPal at paypal.me forward slash NorCalCarters. Thank you.